We cannot believe he is back. That being the exiled VTuber Tostify. Seen here, here, and here again. With the model that he was using eight months ago. This VTuber at the time receiving loads of attention. Having posted up this AI artwork. Then claiming it was not AI artwork. Having earlier said no one should be using AI artwork. This then led to others to point out that this particular individual earlier had claimed to be a streamer for Cloud. 9, while they actually had no connection to that esports organization. Further, there were allegations of copied emote artwork, copied character design, along with copied background artwork, alongside allegations that this particular VTuber was faking hate DMs. Later on stream, Tostify would admit that he bought himself onto another esports team, getting on their roster by paying off a friend. Take a listen to his voice here. I know a guy that has a pro team that they put you on the team or on the team roster. You apply for verification. There's a chance you might get it or you might not. And and my alt got it, but my main didn't. So I used my alt as my main for a bit. Upon all this being brought to light, Tostify would create a twit longer, take that twit longer down, create another twit longer, take that twit longer down, then promising a graduation date, only to then say that he was skipping his graduation altogether. Less than two weeks later, they would appear again with Twitter blue, and even promising a return stream. That as more accusations came about, claiming that Tostify was engaging in follow baiting, meaning he was following numerous accounts, waiting for them to follow him back, and and then unfollowing them in return. In some months, unfollowing thousands of accounts. And as these allegations mounted, Tostify would simply go on to block numerous accounts, including that of yours truly. This all occurring eight and then seven months ago, respectively. As then two months after that, on January 27th of this year, Tostify would claim to leave yet again, tweeting out at 9 p.m. on January 27th, good night for the last time. This while their alternate account was suspended by Twitter.com. But now today, we have this account. Having been created back in December of 2018 with a debut, TBA, sporting the name Arata Koki, and this very familiar face in the profile picture. A very, very familiar face indeed. But that's not all, as we also have this account, going by the name of Kanai Mamoru, self-identifying as an alien sent from the future. Let's now go ahead and listen to Tostify's voice months ago when he claimed that he was not coming back as a VTuber. I, I promise you, I, I don't want to. I don't want to hire oh. a new, uh, artist and a new rigger. I'm not looking forward to being in the in the community again. And now we have Kanai. Does this sound like I just woke up? Oh man, that means I'm gonna get scared so much more. We're playing a horror game, by the way. We're playing uh, Amanda the Adventurer. We were talking on Twitch. When I was playing Valorant and I asked you guys, I was like, what game do you guys want me to play? This coming by way of Kanai's YouTube channel, wherein currently he is a PNG tuber, having earlier using this free VTuber model. Kanai is also very active here on Twitch.tv, now celebrating and saying we hit Twitch affiliate alongside 4,000 followers on Twitter.com. That post being responded from the Arata Koki account saying congrats on 4K Kanai. Arata Koki going going on to respond to Kanai numerous times over numerous dates and other instances where Kanai is responding to Erotic Koki. And we also have other accounts responding to the Erotic Koki account and the Kanai Mamoru account, despite the two of them having very different follower numbers. This debut to be announced VTuber has also taken a lot of time to respond to numerous Niji Sanji English members. These actions also being taken by the Kanai account. And from time to time, it's not just the boys they're responding to. And from time to time, it's not just those in Niji Sanji English they're responding to. Tweeting out to indie VTubers here and there, including even earlier, responding to VTubers that had spoken out against Tostify. Seen here replying to Bao and also Kenji. Yesterday, Kanai tweeting out, I never understood the point of blocking someone you never interacted with. I think 99.9% .9 of the accounts that have me blocked are people I never even seen before. Which is very interesting as both of these accounts
accounts have me blocked as of this past weekend, despite me never interacting with either of those accounts. Kanai at this time also featuring this new look as posted by a live 2D artist, which is now currently in the rigging phase by another artist. We're not aware if these artists are aware of who they're dealing with. And now our next segment is very special. As we record live on Twitch.tv, Kanai Mamoru himself came into our chat. Let's take a listen. We have the man of the hour here right now in our chat. Oh, hi. Saying once again, hello, I appreciate it if you don't get any of the artists or rigor involved in this situation. Not a problem. I can speak to you in private if you'd like. We've already spoken in private and you blocked me. <laughs> Remember that? Do you recall months ago when you had reached out and then you had went ahead and blocked me? Do you recall that you blocked me this past weekend? Kanai Mamoru. That was months ago. I had eight months of therapy and I didn't block you in the weekend. I blocked you when I first started and it was a recommendation from my therapist. Actually, that's not true because I had seen your account before you blocked me this weekend. I was able to see your account before this weekend, actually. I don't know where you've seen it, but I can guarantee you were blocked for a while. And now we have this account, which also blocked me this past weekend, Eroticoki. Does this look familiar to you? The profile picture on this account, this account that you've been responding to time and time again? Oh no, we're talking right now. This is perfectly healthy. There's no reason why we need to talk in private. We can talk right here. That's an addicted model. Adopted. That's an adopted model. Did you let the individual that adopted this model know about everything that you had been involved with regarding this model? I told them the history and they're willing to get it. I have one more question for you. I just have one more question and we can call it. Are you going to let anyone know on your Twitter account that you were tossedify? Are you going to go to Twitter on your connection? Nai Mamaru account and let anyone know. I'm not going to stick it up on my banner or anything, but I'm willing to speak about it after my debut. Why after your debut? Why not right now on Twitter.com? Why is it so important that this happens after your debut? I'm not sure. I just feel more comfortable doing it that way. Well, that was Kanai Mamaru in my chat. Also earlier in this tweet saying, this will be the one and only time I'll talk about my past life, even though in our chat saying he would do it after his debut. Further saying, I've taken therapy and gotten a lot better. I even started fresh and have done nothing wrong since then. I appreciate everyone that supported or continue to support on my journey. Well, thank you very much for stopping in today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue on and uh, post this out to YouTube now. But thanks for stopping in. It is appreciated. But that now brings us to this tweet from Saraway weeks ago saying, people saying I hate VTubers because of drama. Just hear me out. Drama isn't exclusive to VTubers or any specific group. It's a universal part of our lives and workplace friendships, relationships, and various other contexts. People who fail to acknowledge this reality might be disregarding their own double standards. I understand that when watching content creators, the desire to avoid stressful situations is natural, but it's important to recognize that drama is often unavoidable. That then receiving this quote retweet from Pingu, stating while this is completely true, discarding your persona at the drop of the slightest trouble and coming back a week later with a new character is something unique to VTubing and a free pass for this behavior to thrive. Mookie going on to respond, Anonymity equals lack of accountability and that's always how it's been. I'm pretty sure that's exactly why VTubing gets the quote-unquote drama causing creators it does. Bad people are drawn to the ability of acting out without consequence. And here we are again with Val, the Jiggly Whale Girl. Earlier this month, attending in person the Conquest Festival. This particular convention under fire due to massive overcrowding and other logistical issues. Upon her return stream, Val would take the time to thank many, including not only her volunteers, but volunteers with Conquest. That as she would reveal other workings behind the scenes. Captured here, describing that Val heard the Conquest staff talking to fellow VTuber Shoto, who had expected to hit the stage alongside Val. Staff was talking to Shoto about a sound check the night before their panel, but they didn't talk to her about it, even though she she was the one that was set to sing some songs as requested by Conquest. 
Bao was also unsure as to why Shoto's panel went first, with Bao also revealing that herself and Shoto had the same Conquest staff in their Discord channels, but they were only responding to Shoto and very actively responding to him. Upon trying to ping staff, she received only silence in return. And then upon Bao tweeting out, they forgot about me, responding to fans who were expecting her to already be on stage. Only then did the Conquest staff actually respond to her, apologizing, but also also asking her to delete the tweet wherein she said they forgot about me. Bao would simply go on to reply to this summary with yeah, and then quote retweeting it with oof. Further, Shoto on his return stream revealed that his meet and greet that was only scheduled for three hours and was supposed to include breaks was instead run for four hours straight by Conquest with no breaks. Conquest at this time now running refunds, posting up these valid refund scenarios, such as if you were a day two and three pass holder and were not able to enter the venue and receive a refund code or those that had not claimed a wristband or those that were not able to enter the venue but did not receive a refund code or do not fall into any of those cases or but they were not entered but okay so they but but they were not also to enter the venue but they did not receive the refund code but that's also only for days two and three but we also have we, we also have premium pass okay we have premium pass holders okay well good luck to those looking for refunds and and good luck to those on Twitch.tv. Earlier receiving such backlash to their new branded content guidelines that they would go on to tweet out, these guidelines are bad for you and bad for Twitch, and we are removing them immediately. This tweet then getting fact-checked by Twitter.com, stating that these guidelines are still in the terms of service. That as we turn to the Twitch support account, rolling out even more, as here we have Zach Bussy letting us know that Twitch has added some context on the new monitor monetized streamer agreement as affiliates are being automatically subject to these new terms while partners like me need to click review and accept the new terms or will be booted from being a partner. We also have this section reading as minimum content requirements saying affiliates or partners must provide a consistent amount of live content, program quality live content, regularly interact with and engage viewers of your Twitch channel and respond to live viewers of your Twitch channel via Twitch chat. This is the first time Twitch has inserted a minimum content interaction quality or engagement requirement in their affiliate or partner agreements. So I'm reading that line and wondering if affiliates and partners also have to type in their chat to meet these requirements. This bringing up disability concerns. As here we have Alien Cow VTuber. Irie saying Twitch just said reverse hand with middle finger extended emoji to all the disabled or chronically ill streamers in the monetized streamer agreement or anyone who has to take time away from streaming for obligations like kids or moving. Bao earlier having seen the branded content guidelines and stating since Twitch decided that taking half our income wasn't enough and wants to make our lives even more miserable, please remember to follow your favorite streamers on YouTube and other platforms before this website finally kicks the bucket. That Bao tweet being quote retweeted as Ira the second would say, call me crazy, but I find it hard to sympathize when someone who makes more money in a week than most people see in their entire lives cries about not making even more money. Bao clapping back here with you really said get behind me multi-billion dollar company. That then receiving a very heated reply. This individual going on to say I've never liked Bao and on my old account I was critical of her BS there too. This apparently being their new account. Wow we have a lot of those today and we can apparently assume this is their new VTuber model too. Alright that's not all from Bao as we are once again back with Shiori Pon, a rogue surgeon VTuber, having after Conquest tweeted out this photo, stating I tried the shirt on when I got home from Conquest and I think I stretched her out. This VTuber then reacting to our reaction to that tweet, stating, bruh, I would have said, mom, I'm in the news, but of all my tweets, it had to be this one. Bao herself going on to quote retweet the earlier t-shirt tweet, assuring Shiori Pon, no, you didn't stretch it out because you're wearing the right size, trust me, haha. -ha. Face throwing a kiss emoji. Also, Bao would go on to call me paparazzi and ratio me, but we don't need to talk more about that. As having also attended Conquest in person was our co-host Cody, taking a stream this past Saturday to talk about his experience, as we also have him here today talking about other things VTubers say. Take it away. ko hi yo We kick off today's Hololive news with some updates for Hololive City, as brand new details of the event have now been announced, starting with the official collaboration with the baseball team 
Yomiuri Giants. Collaboration merch is now available on the official web store of the team, with Kanata showing off some of the goods. These include tapestries, towels, and acrylic stands. An official Nike Hololive Cross Giants replica team jersey is also on sale for around 180 US dollars, with Holoc Society's Kayori tweeting that she just purchased one for herself. The jersey is now sold out. The talent lineup for Holo City has also been revealed. So if you're looking to line up with your Oshi, Suisei will be participating in Hololive attractions at the end of July to mid-August. Also announced were the ticket sales for Hololive's fifth gen concert, Twinkle For You. Originally set to go live at 3 p.m. on June 12th, an error at E Plus meant that tickets were sold earlier than planned. Hololive issued a statement on the matter saying all tickets purchased for the day will be refunded and sold again at a later date. E Plus followed up with a statement and apology of their own, explaining the error and tweeting that the error caused both general and standing area tickets of the concert to go live earlier than the official announcement. As it stands, all tickets for the concert will continue to be refunded and Hololive are asking fans to wait for another announcement as to when the sales will go ahead again. The Gen 5 talent all issued apologies, including Nene, who said sorry to everyone and thank you for those who waited for 3 p.m. Further adding, we'll update you when we can, so please come and see us. Fans should also go and see Momosuzu Nene, as she's just revealed a brand new outfit, with Anmi behind the design giving Nene a sporty cheerleader look and Jenny responsible for the live 2D rigging. Nenechi went on to tweet, I always get support from you, so I made a cheerleading costume so I can cheer and support you all too. She also went on to release a brand new original song, Michishuribe, tweeting it was a song she wrote for everyone when she was feeling anxious. In other news, we pop over to Holic Society's Takane Louie, who celebrated her birthday with a 3D live music show where Shirakami Fubuki and Omaru Polka played the role of MC, bringing on guests such as Ayame, Choco and Marine, and Hoshimachi Suisei. There was one instance during the show where Shishiro Botan did not have a mic, so Korone had to lean over and share it with her. The great Okan also made an appearance, sporting a Takane Louis shirt and wishing her a happy birthday. We also got a collab number from all of the burbs, making it the first time Holotori have got together to share a stage, causing the rat Hackers Bales to tweet that she's so ready, as Dakama captured some screenshots, calling them precious and beloved burbs. Louis went on to release a brand new original song called Baka Baka, written by Dako Nina, and also simultaneously released a second song called First Cry, written by Horie Shota. Fans of Louis took to Twitter to send their love and appreciation, with some Louis Tomos from all over the world coming together to create a cookbook for her, complete with recipes and messages, where Aragaki Ken was responsible for cooking up the front cover. In collab news, we check out Shiriken. We've been contacted by 7-Eleven Japan in a tweet saying, We've been in contact with you for some time about a job. As stated in the request form, we would like you to start work on Tuesday the 13th of June. Suisei went on to confirm the job, tweeting a silhouette of the five members, with 7-Eleven posting an official announcement where shoppers can receive original artwork when purchasing nutritional drinks. VTuber, interviewer and MC Domo seems to be very happy with the illustrations, tweeting, everyone say thank you to Hololive now. In more merch news, we turn to those that are maidenless, as Hololive have released a special voice pack allowing you to wake up to the sultry voice of your chosen bride. Azki, Lamy and Pekora are featured on the promo video, but there are others for you to enjoy. And if you're looking for some male VTubers, there is a confession and proposal voice pack featuring the Uproar Boys, as well as many, many more of the Holostars Japan crew. In celebratory news, we turn to Yuzuki Choco, who on June 11th, during a morning just chatting stream, went from nearly 100 member subs to 10,000 member subs in the single stream. Choco went on to tweet, how is it possible to have 10k members? Thank you all. This as Kyo captured the 10k moment with a gif. Also celebrating is Amane Kanata, who has hit 1 million views on four of her songs, which includes her cover of Yasubi's Idol, uploaded just over a week ago. Over the weekend, Kanata held a stream to explain that doctors have told her to rest her voice for a week, but also revealed she has an announcement to make on June 17th. Continuing to celebrate musical milestones is elite idol Sakura Miko, who has now hit 6.5 million views on her Kyofu Orubaku cover, with other Hololive talent also covering the song, including Hololive Indonesia's Koreji Oli, who has now hit 500,000 views on her version. Also in Hololive ID news, we turn to Kayala Kowalskia, who teased a brand new model and revealed a small chibi with he in charge of designing Kayala's cute sister. Skia? Kakia? Kuchkia? Kuchkia? Yes. The design's so cute it killed the fox Fubuki. Meanwhile, Keen Biscuit created some art of the small girl alongside Muna's small version, showing us what daycare would look like. And no one can escape the hammer, as Holocure shares this screenshot of the blacksmith, tweeting why play one type of game when you can play two, with Caillou also adding that her default HP value is 69. Nice. But that's everything from me. Back over to you, false. Thank you very much, Cody. And here now we are again with Hot.
Heidi, fresh off of debuting her brand new original song, Game Boy. You can check that out with the link below. Stream Game Boy. Hi, hi, everyone. Starting off, we take a look at VTuber agency Idol, who finally reveals the talents of their second English generation, Endless, and also getting to release their promotional video after a few delays, which may or may not have been planned by one of the talents from Endless themselves. Though many fans and fellow agency mates give them all a warm welcome and congratulations regardless. These five talents will be making their formal debut soon on June 14th, so be sure to say hi to the three-headed clown Koni Confetti, the cutest otaku Momo Otako, the thieving raccoon Poco Raccoon, the god Kai Saikota, and the legendary rock star Roka Rodin. Roka also thanks fellow Ian talent Rido Ron for singing the theme song that played during Endless's promotional video, who we will also be seeing singing at Ofkai Expo Live, Ofkai Expo's first big concert event, alongside many other talented VTubers for two and a half hours of musical performances. The performance starting on Ofkai's second day on Saturday, June 17th at Ofkai's main stage. Also appearing at Ofkai Expo is found family VTuber group VTuban, as fellow VTuber Techie Cutie will be bringing them for a special pop-up at her booth with merch while supplies last. Though before then, VTuban also seems to have received another invitation for a special event seen here, that being for Rose Doodle's birthday party happening on June 13th a day before her actual birthday, as she's written down here. With more information, fun, and treats promised to come soon. And that's all from me. Back to you, False. Thank you so much, Heidi. Also, a very quick thank you to Midori for all of their wonderful moderation work over the past months, but also this birth hap to Heidi, posting of this art and saying, you cute nerd you, Game Boy is a certified banger. And yes, it's a full house once again, as rounding us out today is Lady, with even more things VTubers Say. Thanks, False. Dragon VTuber Ruzu announces that they will be streaming both on Twitch and Kick. However, their Dragon VTuber persona will be specifically towards their Twitch streaming content and that they will be bringing an entirely new VTuber character onto their Kick platform. Tweeting out, I love acting, I love playing characters, and I really wanted to bring another VTuber to my table. With this new OC to be revealed as a Kraken, that being a Degen of the Sea, Bea, with their full design shown here, along with with their kick account fully running and in all caps. Though Ruzu isn't the only one with her take on kick, as we have lewd succubus VTuber Nuyumi, as they have been a kick streamer since February of 2023 and have decided to share their experience so far. Yumi would go off to say that starting off kick was rough because it was newly announced. There was no moderation at that time and it was very easy for people to follow bot and troll on the platform. I could say now that they do have a good moderation system and I only experienced a follow botting once. And it was no correlation to my identity at all, compared to on Twitch. Growth on Kick was very unexpected and came from within the site itself. Within the first month, I'd been flooded with a lot of positivity from creators on the platform that while also being very transparent, especially on their monthly revenue, putting a disclaimer that I was blessed last month by an amazing individual so this isn't my normal average of subs at all, but I added it just to put things into perspective. I currently gained 200 subs on Twitch in May and my payout is around 550-ish. That's 100 more subs than Kick just to be around the same average. With more personal insight on Kick versus Twitch, we have Sonova, who started streaming on Kick in March 2023, stating the community was very welcoming, even the face cam streamers. While also going out to say that Twitch felt like a chore due to the constant censoring, and that Sonova streams on Kick because it's convenient for everyone else. And though she'll continue to do both, Sonova does not expect anything profitable to be coming from Twitch. This as Sin introduces themselves, despite currently going under their rebranding period. Thanking everyone so much for the love and support. And speaking of love and support, we have Yutan, a Tayaki racer, who tweeted out, if you are a POC VTuber, quote, retweet your model and your cultural background. I want to see the amount of diversity we share in this community, and I want to meet more of you and appreciate y'all so much. Starting off the thread with their very own introduction, Yutan follows up that tweet, saying, I'm genuinely so happy my post has brought more people together, and for more amazing VTubers to be discoverable. I'm happy I was able to help find more of you guys and meet more of y'all, we should all definitely hang out sometime at some point. And who in their right mind would say no to hanging out with this god? He's 
so cool. Of course, VTuber Tomo Imari has unfortunately announced their hiatus as deemed necessary by her talent manager, Tomo Umari of Tomo Umari, because she is kind of tired. So she'll be taking a week off, but will surely be back for June 19th and with an upcoming surprise. So don't worry, there'll be more punny humor soon. That as Tomoe also celebrates reaching over 5,000 followers on Twitter. Omocat had earlier this month announced their virtual debut as yes, they are now fully live and in action with their showcase coming from Kat Lumi from Iron Vertex as Omo would go out to thank everyone for coming and supporting their debut. And speaking of debuts, we have Amiya, your friendly neighbor spider mom who showcases their 1.5 upgrade that while also concluding their hoodie giveaway in collaboration with pastel melon though don't be too sad as this hoodie design is super epic and still available the singer and panda vtuber yutana pandora releases a new cover that being salamander that way having also showcased their new 3d model as shown here as this panda is now unstoppable and certainly knows how to kick high cooking vtuber onigiri so Celebrates their birthday, starting off strong with a 12 hour birthday stream, receiving birthday fan art, along with the posting of a Onimar Nichijo. This is Onigiri also announces that she will be at Ofkai Expo at Onimar's Bingo Palooza panel. That, along with the official launch of the Onibro plushies, now live. Sugar Rock celebrates their birthday, showcasing the obligatory birthday balloon tweet, as Sugar also posts the release of their new cover, Celestial by Ed Sheeran. With the video edited by Muke Muke and illustration by Maho Simaru. VTuber Ayami celebrates their birthday in turning three years old, revealing not only a new 3D outfit, that being a 3D cat maid costume, along with some singing and important guests, with everyone having a great time. Though that's not all, as she would also be releasing some birthday merch to celebrate her three years. Crystal Dragon VTuber Eden celebrates having over 13,000 followers on Twitch, tweeting out no Never thought I'd get this far, but it makes me so happy to know 13,000 people liked what I create enough to drop a follow. That as Eden would also go out to ask you if you're ready for summer, but also showcase her adorably forked tongue. She goes, yeah. And now back to you, false. Thank you, lady. That's right. It's one, two, three, four VTubers for the price of one, as we'd like to thank Ivory for this TBS crew work. And you soon can check them out at the upcoming Offkai Expo and then later following Anime Expo. And that is all for today. As always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below. Send in your VTuber news to our Discord. We record live on Twitch.tv, and we'll have more things VTubers say for you soon.